Om Mangalam Guru Devaya Devi Matriksha Mangalam Mangalam Bhakta Brindevyo Sarvalokaya Mangalam Om Stapakaya Chudarmasya Sarvadarma Sarupine Avatara Varishtaya Ramakrishna Yate Namaha Om Jananim Sharadam Devim Ramakrishna Jagat Gurum Parapadmeta Yostritva Pranamami Mur Mur Om Sarashiva Samarambam Shankaracharam Majamam Ashmarachara Prayantam Bande Gurum Param Param Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Devo Param Brahman Tasmai Sri Guru Veda Mahatasmai Sri Guru Veda Namaha Jai Ma Continuing our discussion of Kali Puja, the ritual worship of the Mother um, I think Give me a small little uh, Kali, simple Kali Puja book. I keep forgetting to grab one. I'm not sure if this is in the small book, the section we're on. I don't think it is, but I want to make sure. Let's see what is in the small book. Thank you. So, Last week we discussed, the last couple of weeks we did uh, discussing Bhutta Shuti, purification of the element and the self, and then this very elaborate and very deep process. And then, uh, 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 and then last week I think we did the uh, Jiva Nyasa and the, the, the Matrika Nyasa, the installation of the deity within the heart, right? Uh, uh, the Prana Pratistana, Swath Prana Pratistana, and then the embodiment of the deity through the letters of the alphabet, the kar, uh, matrika nyasa, and especially on the hands and on the different parts of the body, and then the different chakras. We mentioned uh, the more elaborate the more elaborate part. I'm not sure, did we mention the, um, I'm not sure we, if we really mentioned the, um, what's it called, the uh, mantra, mantra purusha. We did, we, that was something not on my notes. I, can, I don't have my those notes with me, so I have to remember. But there's idea that uh, there is a the uh, we install Ma within the heart. We install the deity within the heart, and the deity's form is the mantra. But that's actually literally the deity's form is the mantra. Uh, uh, they call it mantra purusha. There's a form made of mantra, and just like we have limbs, right? The mant the, the the deity has the mantra purusha has limbs made of the syllables of the mantra, and so this uh, more elaborate. I also don't have. I see the more elaborate nyasa. I began to mention the am am im im chim im um rim rim, all the different things like this. All those uh, letters, those limbs were creating. They're the limbs within the mantra purusha. The deity's body made of mantra is identical to our. Actually, we can't say that her body is identical to our body. Our body is identical to her body, right? Uh, we have we have aspects. Our body manifests our consciousness through uh, through through name and form, just like her body. Actually, our body. Is her body manifesting, right? You can say that we're made in the image of God, like this idea. You know, like what does that mean? Of course, we always think, oh, we're making God in our image. That's another psychological, historical thing, right? Philosophically, we're made in literally made in God's image. She vibrates through mantra and expands into different aspects of her of the world, including a little tiny part, our part, our body. Actually, the cosmic body is also seen as the the um, the uh, um, Manifestation of of God's form in the Bhagavatam again and again. There's example. There's a certain or her head or his head is the heavens. His feet is the underworld. Her back is death. The front is life. Her right not, eye is the sun. Her left eye is the moon. The third, her, you know, describes her her breath is the ocean. You know, you know, I'm not. I'm just kind of making it up right now. I don't remember the verses. Purusha Shukta mentions such things, but the Bhagavatam probably so far in our readings of the Bhagavatam. Or we are now, it's that description has probably been given 20 times, right? This, this cosmic Mahapurusha, the un universe is itself the manifestation of, of the deity, right? Uh, so that's true of the universe. That's also true of our little mini universes. We're also a manifestation. And so that's seen as the vibrating alphabet or the vi vibrating syllables creates our form, 
Uh, and so when we when we do nyasam, we're actually matching the 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 the, the, the deity form, the divine form of mantra made of mantra and our own human or subtle form, like the human form, our subtle form. And this has been taught. Actually, the the proper thing is it's it's properly done through nyasa that we're doing as a way of, of purifying, consecrating the body or replace or invoking the, the devi's body. Nowadays, I see it being taught online and in in um in um seminars, right? yoga retreats and the like, right? And it's being taught uh, 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 um, through all different new uh, uh, names, which I won't mention, not to be charitable, right? Uh, but immediately it's done. Now they figure out how to way. Like, how do you how do you figure out a way to make this um, uh, marketable? Right? You can teach. You can teach. You can teach a, a seminar on how to like chant certain mantras in different parts of the body and invoke this put in the, in the mantra purusha. And then the benefit of that also because to worship Ma is not. Of course, people make money worshiping Ma. That's what I mean. It's not. It's not the way you market something is not. Oh, I mean, it'd be ideal to come learn this. I'll teach you something. That allows you to to, to purify the, your, purify your consciousness and body so you can so you can worship Ma, but usually it's like oh to uh, balance your pranas, awaken your kundalini, uh, attain health, remove obstacles. You know, it's like it's all it's done very for my own benefit. I do these mantras for my own benefit. That's very sellable. So it's both um, um, economically sellable as well as but the purpose becomes your own like you know your own personal glory experience rather than see and of course the thing is we do we worship ma we do we get happiness we do get personal glory from such a thing right but the purpose when you when your puja the purpose of your puja is your own happiness that's that's not if i feed you of course if i feed you i should get happiness feeding you right but i should get happiness if i make you happy not just by the act of feeding you sometimes people you know it's like yeah i mean there's a weird thing it's like you no know, feeding you gives me happy no matter what you whether you like it or not it's about my happiness, right? It's kind of a weird thing. I mean, it happens in relationships too. <laughs> it's like this, it pleases, it gets, it gives me pleasure to do this for you. That's good. I mean, if if the purpose, if, if you're getting pleasure by somebody else's happiness, another thing, right? So the purpose, actually, this is a sim, sim, to me, it's a symptom of something. Uh, it's true of all aspects of puja. Why are we doing puja? Uh, um, the, uh, and as I'm describing these different ritual, this deeper spiritual, psychic, astral, yogic reasons behind all the ritual things we're doing and saying um uh, you realize wow it's so profound right and it's doing stuff right like oh like this means this, this is a, this is everything is kundalini everything is a symbol of of, of ida and pingala and and and, and the element and, and and everything is our i mean it's just re re reaffirming that right that's all this is this is part of the knowledge part of part of it but why is it being done right like we'll eventually we'll go into mudras, and that's uh, very to me. To mudras are the most fascinating topic, right? Uh, these hand gestures and things like this. They're they're very. They have tremendous personal benefit. They re, they're they're and they're doing stuff. They're symbolic of the elements, the tattvas, and and moving pranas around and doing all kinds of stuff, right? Rewiring stuff to, to effect. But the scriptures say the reason they're done is to please the deity. So we're doing well. Well, well it does do something. And there's a tradition you can know what it does, right? But the reason whatever it's do, whatever it does is being done is to it's to please the deity. So that's a good thing to remember. We're doing it in order to please, in order to uh, as as an act of worship. And when the act of worship, we also become pleased, right? So that's an important. Uh, we're not doing it for ourselves, although it is for our best interest, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's the thing, you know. So uh, uh, the examples given in many many saints uh, like watering Srila Prabhupada give this example like watering the um, the uh, fruit of a tr no the roots of a tree if you water the roots of the tree the whole tree gets benefit right but if the if the different individual branches and leaves and fruit and flowers and everything is, says I, I want the water it's all for me I want I want to enjoy it right it's, it's the reason the water exists for my then not only and and, and 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 if you sit there and you try to water the leaves, right? The leaves don't benefit that much, and the tree doesn't benefit, and the tree suffers and the leaves suffer. If the if it's if if you're doing it to the center, if you're doing it to the if then the leaves also benefit. So when we're acting part by doing everything for the center, right? Doing everything for Ma, doing everything for God, we also become happy. It's tricky because as soon as you do it for your happiness, right? It's a weird little it's a it's a tiny thing, little mistake. It's very hard to even describe, you know. 
because we want to be happy. We say, oh, if you want to be happy, worship God, right? But if you worship God to become happy, that's not selfless devotion, right? <laughs> Right, it's a weird. It's a, it's a very. It's a, and perhaps you have to start. You know, it is. It is. We're told. You know, by worshiping, we become happy. Right? If you want to be happy, and that's not a wrong thing to say. You want to be happy. You know, worship the source of all happiness, uh, the source of all bliss, the uh, embodiment of bliss. Um, but uh, uh, I, I remember this one scene that I may, I may have mentioned before, but it's really struck in my mind tremendously over the years. Um, there was a devotee. Uh, Forgetting her name, forgetting her name just now, at the local Hare Krishna temple many years ago, and after years of japa, she had a kind of a breakthrough realization, right? And the realization was like, oh, I'm doing it for the wrong reason, right? She was doing her japa because first she starts, oh, to get mental, to control her mind, right? To uh, it brings her happiness, it brings her peace, reduces stress, right? And uh, 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 helps her even 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 subtle things like, oh, it will enlighten me. Right, even that is like still the, the purpose of, of the mantra. The benefit was for her own benefit, right? And she said, "Oh, ac actually, I'm chanting the mantra because it pleases Krishna." Right, and so that was like that was a huge shift. And of course, by pleasing Krishna, she reduced her stress, <laughs> increase her proper concentration, all the things that the mantra, including her enlightenment. Right, but that simple act of trying to do it to, to, for for a larger reason, for the spiritual reason. Rather than even subtly for my own my own benefit, right? Swami Vivekananda, I think it's Mundakya Upanishad. Swami Vivekananda um, used as his um, slogan for the Ramakrishna. I have it tattooed even. Right? Um, uh, this Atmano Mukshritam Jagadhitayacha. That uh, we do things for our own uh, enlightenment and for the good of the world. Now this is <coughs> it's tricky because we're doing things for our own enlightenment. Right, and for and we're doing it for the good of the world, but the but, it's for our own enlightenment doesn't mean selfishly, not spiritually selfishly, you know. And that's the thing is our own enlightenment has to also be good, has to be good to the world. People who their spiritual life hurts others, doesn't seem, that's a that's a first sign something's wrong. Anyways, it's just back to uh, mantra purusha. Uh, uh, the, so the, the by 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 chanting the the the, the syllables of the mantras, and there's there's actually literature. The benefit of each mantra, the benefit of each sound, the benefit of each sound and each point. It has benefits. It does benefit the prana. It does benefit the mind. It does change. It affects health. It affects dynamics and, and, uh, and everything like that. But the purpose shouldn't be that. Right? That's the thing. It, it, uh, that's my larger point on the nyasa. Many more points we made, but we have to eventually move to the next page. And the next section is Gand Gandhari Archana. Gandha, Gandha Adi Archana. Archana means to worship or to on to, uh, to and Gandha Gandha means uh, fragrance, right? All right. Uh, Gandha means smell, right? Uh, and here Gandha we specifically means sandalwood paste, right? Because the per the perfume that's offered, although something we Isha Gandha we spray a flower with perfume and then offer. And one of the five items of off offering is smell, a flower, incense, light, water. I mean, food, right? These are the main uh, five offerings, and the five offering, ten offerings, and sixteen offering. Each one, Gundam, means uh, perfume or fragrance. But in a general sense, the main, the most auspicious fragrance is sandalwood. And so, and that, and actually, sandalwood paste is the way sandalwood is offered. You can make incense out of sandalwood, oils out of sandalwood, right? And they're very auspicious sounds. But sandalwood paste has a special quality, uh, um, and it's done by you take a piece of a good quality piece of sandalwood. You take a big rough rock and you a little bit of water and you work on it. Just rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it down. And slowly by adding water and, and, and doing this type of uh, rubbing against a rock, you get a paste. Right? That paste is then everything in puja, pretty much everything in puja gets touched by this paste. It's part of every almost everything. At least every flower gets offered. It's get every it's dipped. And actually we mentioned the other day that um, there's one saying Right, that a flower without fragrance is like a Brahmin without devotion, right? Or, or like a body without a soul, right? Or you can make make those type of those type of statements, right? I mean, something un, not, not a very uh, uh, useless thing to be thrown away. A body without a soul becomes immediately you arrange you call somebody to remove it, 
right? And so a Brahmin without devotion, you should also call somebody <laughs> the flower without fragrance. So of course, it's not well, like not saying, oh, this flower doesn't have fragrance; it's useless. Like a like a you know, it's not like that. The the point is that that saying that that um, that uh, couplet. Uh, uh, has two, one is that it shows the importance of having devotion, <laughs> right? And the importance of offering flowers as fragrance, as both things, both things that occur. And so a flower is not just chosen by its beauty, but also by its fragrance. And whether or not a flower has its own fragrance or not, if you dip it in sandalwood paste, wow, <laughs> immediately <laughs> fragrance, right? It has the best possible fragrance. Because there's many fragrance, you can, you can see, you know, you smell uh, people with different types of oils on, they have a certain effect. Right, you smell somebody with expensive certain types of perfume. Some 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 smells are, of course, people like different types of smell. But there's sattvic smells, there's rajasic smells, there's tamasic smells, right? There's uh, uh, there's spiritual smells, there's romantic smells, there's lust, there's you know you can there's there's worldly. I mean, I, I honestly careful what I say, but there is somebody in this cloth a long time ago who shouldn't be in this cloth, <laughs> but he's still in this cloth again. Uh, 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 but and when we met him, you know, it's like. You know, smells worldly. Not only is there worldly, but also the choice of his fragrances. Where, you know, you can see there's certain, you know, certain. Beat the point too much, but out of all profitable fragrances and different oils, actually, it, there's interesting. There's um, even for 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 the ganda offering of of fragrance oils, the part of puja. There's oils for each season. Every season has actually uh, Chaitanya Bhagavat Das. Uh, he's our favorite pujari. We're missing too much. Uh, he gave me a list of all the different. And he was trying to find them. All these different rare oils, different ambers and different different flowers. And and, Ram, and uh, Komala um, Adikeshav, he found some very rare oils that are mentioned in the in the in the in Lita Sasunam and other texts. It was the one in Kadamba, maybe. Maybe it was one of them that he, we have. We have a little bit. It's one of our precious things. On on, on a special Amabashas will offer. The special oil, these very fragrant, these very subtle oil fragrances. If you go to that flower, that tree outside the um, Parijata, you're not supposed to smell the flower on the thing, and you're not supposed to pick the flower or let the flower hit the ground. But by not picking it and not letting it hit the ground, we collect those flowers. Of course, we sometimes take them off the ground and we offer them. But they're they're this big. But the fragrance, you have to really like it's divine. There's a there's a, a very subtle and spiritual fragrance. So sandalwood is one such subtle and spiritual fragrance. And uh, uh, it's and and this and it's it's also considered a symbolic, um, a symbolic fragrance. Also, not it's a it's a it's a tree that takes a long time to grow, right? It's a very slow growing tree, right? And so and it's a very hard wood, right? So it's a hard wood of a very slow growing uh, tree, uh, and then you take a piece of this wood, which already comes from generations of growth, you know. And then you have to rub it and rub it and rub it and rub it and rub it to get the paste. So Swami Shivananda, I was looking for this, but I couldn't find it today. I remember which book it was in. He has a, a list of a little bit symbolic interpretation of, of each of the offerings. And so like camphor means this and, and incense is this and oil. And so for, for sandalwood, it's the symbolism of that of the ego. So you rub it. You Part of every, part of puja is you... you uh, you're rubbing your ego down, and you're rubbing your ego down. You, most people's e people have a big ego. It smells bad, right? <laughs> Not just the perfume or cologne that they choose. <laughs> their ego also smells bad, independent of their perfume and cologne, right? But uh, uh, but if it's rubbed, then something actually it seems like you're wearing it down. But that rub wearing it down becomes precious, becomes a, a divine fragrance, right? So the, the sandalwood paste represents. Our devotional activity and worship and, and sadhana and meditation like that and selfless service putting other people's first uh, like this is is itself rubbing rubbing down the ego and and that type of rubbing down the quali the, the value of a piece of sandalwood comes from it being rubbed by being by being it it, it, it uh, uh, by it being used by being being um, shaved by being uh, reduced its value comes. That's a, so it's a very it's used as a symbolic thing like that. Also, different deities are said to have different fragrances, and the, and and like for instance, Sri Ramakrishna, those who uh, describe him, who knew him, said he always smelled like sandalwood. 
even though he didn't use that. Of course, there's one point of his life where he did put sandalwood paste on. There was a particular part of his sadhana where his body was burning. And so when the the, um, the Bhairavi, I think, is the one who told him that, oh, this is mentioned, this is a symptom of Mahabhava mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And there's a cure. And one of the cures was he had he rubbed his, he covered his body with uh, sandalwood paste. And he wore, I think, a fragrant garland offered to the deity or something like that. I forget the exact thing. And immediately a problem of years went away. There was a spiritual problem. But sandalwood, whatever that sandalwood paste immediately calmed it. But people said that that his he always smelled like sandalwood. And people, so his disciples said whenever they'd have visions of him or when they, when they feel his presence that they would smell sandalwood. No, we hear like, oh, like when people... The devil shows up. They, it smells like sulfur or something like this, right? You've heard, you know, this is some like of some devil. And actually, we've had some weird over the years. We've had some weird, not in a long time, but kind of the if if we were to be, uh, um, we could say there were some very strange and horrible smells, right? And it was just weird with no 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 obvious causes. So we went. I mean, who knows what the truth is? But we think, oh, there's some. We we need we need to like almost purify it spiritually. You know, you smudge the place and things like that. But also vibration, you pour Ganga water into it. Whatever is there that's causing this very strange and and uh, inappropriate smell, right? Uh, we've seen, I mean, where you guys are sitting, there was once, <laughs> years, years ago. It took several days to get rid of it. Very strange. Who knows what it was, right? But we couldn't, it wasn't an obvious uh, physical cause. We assumed it was a, a astral type of cause. Like we, we cleared it that way. But um, anyway, smell so so uh, sandalwood is is a, is an extremely spiritual smell. It's a symbolic substance, and it's in everything in puja is pretty much just with this. So those of you who grind sandalwood paste for Kali Mandir, right? You're part of every every flower gets offered is gets offered with your sadhana. You know, it's a uh, it's a very important required offering. And there's two types of sandalwood paste. There's regular white sandalwood paste, and then there's lal chand. And the word for sandalwood paste actually is chan, chanda, right? And so lal chanda is red sandalwood paste. And it's actually, I'm not even sure if it's actually a sandalwood tree. I think they call it it's a related tree, but it's not, it doesn't have the same fragrance. But it's a very, that's the, um, and I think because of its red color, it has a shakti kind of kumkum blood type of uh, quality to it, just because of the red color. And lal chanda, we, I know somebody, there's, it's a common name for people. There's one devotee at the Vedanta Society called lal chand. And Lulchan is a symbolic name also because it means sandalwood paste is not offered to every deity. Right? It, lul, uh, lul red sandalwood paste is only offered to Shakti deities. Right? It's only offered to Devi. Ganesha also. Everything offered to De Devi can be offered to Ganesha, her favorite son. Right? <laughs> so and you can offer, he's a little boy, you know, he can offer things. But so it's, it, by being called Lulchan means that you're not only are you an offering for the, for the, for the deity, you're only offered to Devi. Right, so it's kind of like Ishta Nishta. I'm focused on the Divine Mother, this little Chand idea. Um, and so when we're in, in Puja, we usually have, you know, we have a little plate of offerings, right? We have, uh, I remember we've seen, you've seen the different trays that are being offered. On the side of the Pujari, there's a plate of flowers, and there's a plate of, 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 of rice and perfumes and, and um, uh, seeds and um, uh, kumkum and red and white sandalwood paste, the Chandan. That plate, the whole pr collecting of the plate itself is a spiritual type, of, is an act of puja. It's a collection of all best things, right? And, and uh, we were watching a video a few days ago from early years of Kali Mandir. And we were going through our archives, archives for the 25th anniversary. And you see during big pujas, uh, on Haradhan, the first night, when Haradhanji would set things up and set up the ghat and put Ma in her place, we'd have by that time the big tray full of lots of more things, a huge thing like that. And you see, he put, a, he put a light in the middle of it, and then he'd offer the whole thing, and then put it down, and again, offer, and put it down, again, off, and put it down. There's a name, we do it during Durga Puja. The only time I ever do it is during Durga Puja. It's one of the first nights, first days offering. I forget the name of that act. But it's a certain sense, it's, it's, it's the whole thing is being shown. Look, all, look, Ma, look at all the things I've collected, all these best quality things. Look how nicely we presented them. These will be used for your puja. In a certain sense, there's a certain offering and getting her uh, acceptance, permission of uh, these items, you know. Because these very items she's, we're offering to them and then we're going to offer to them, right? And so you can say it's like, oh, like, uh, like you know, you hire a chef 
first thing you do, and he says, oh, look at all the, these are the ingredients I collected. Are these good? Are these are the best quality thing I could find? Okay, then you get you with your blessing, then I'll cook. I'll start making preparation. Right, so that act of collecting everything itself, one of the first acts of puja. Uh, um, uh, uh, the puja tray. And actually, one of the things you see in, in puja books, it always describes, I mean, if you go to like our puja shop, we sell puja trays, you know, very nice copper or brass uh, trays where you collect all these things. So all those things that are being offered, they're all, you know, we're presenting them to them all. We're going to present them individually, bit by bit, right? But we're, present, we're showing them all to them all. They're, they're, these are the purest things we could find and symbolic of everything that we could find. Right, like we, you know, we're not offering all grains in the world, but we have a little cup of grain. We're not offering every sandalwood tree in the world. We're offering a little bit of sandalwood paste, right? Uh, um, it's a collection, symbolic collection, representative collection of everything best we could find. In home, we call those things. In, in, in when somebody asks to do, like I'm, I have to go to somebody's house to do a puja and an email, they write me, oh, send me a list of the samagri. Samagri means all the collection of offerings. We call summer gree the stuff we throw into the fire, that all the seeds, and when we do a fire sacrifice, we do the things in the fire, samagri. Samagri, so, but all puja things, they call it the puja samagri. That's haven samagri, and the box says haven samagri. Puja, and you also get boxes of puja samagri. This is like a little plastic box with a little bit of kumkum, a little bit of rice, a little bit of, you've know, seen those things, and people bring them here sometimes. Not the highest quality, usually it's six, seven dollars for 19 different things. There's even a little comb and a little, plastic mirror, all the things that are supposed to be offered. Not the same as going and finding a beautiful comb and a beautiful mirror and a beautiful cloth, but it's a simple thing. So Samagri is, is a collection of all the things, all the things you, you uh, and what is it? The sen we, every, and it's symbolic because we've talked, I think we hinted this a few weeks ago, that even even the, the, the deity we're worshiping is our own, it's at the deepest level of our beings, it's everywhere, it's our own consciousness. And the very senses go out and collect stuff for it and we try to find the best thing the best music the best smells the best tastes the best touches right and we and by experiencing them we're bringing the the devis of the of the body of the senses the devas and devis of the senses and they're worshiping the center they're worshiping uh shiva they're worshiping ma by this offering but we don't always collect the best things that's the problem we go out and we look for garbage things junk food Right, things that are easily easily pleasing, but these aren't. But if we're thinking, oh, this is actually for puja, then we collect the best things, right? You know, it's like uh, I remember one devotee was he was saying they were trying to find some very good quality milk from uh, protected cows, right? There was a devotee in Los Angeles, and there's not many uh, ahimsa farm communities in Los Angeles, right? So it's a little bit difficult, right? He says that he, I'm, I'm, he's making sweets in the deity temple in the deity kitchen. He says I'm offering wa I'm offering things that I myself wouldn't drink. Right, it's such bill quality stuff at the store that even I wouldn't take it, but I'm going to make this for Krishna. So he's like, he's so he went through it was, you know, it was an eighteen dollar gallon of milk is what he was making sweets out of now, rather than the three dollar gallon of milk, right, right. But uh, he's trying to because this is Krishna is trying to find the best, the best type of thing. But that's also true. Everything we Brahmar, we mentioned it. You mentioned this Brahmar, Panam Brahmahavir, Brahmagno Brahman in the Gita. Brahman is the offering. Brahman is the fire. Brahman is the fire, Brahman is the offering, Brahman is a ghee, the offering to Brahman, the offering, like Brahman is all these activities. That's also, we do it before eating. Brahman is the food, Brahman is the fire digestion, Brahman is the one who puts it into the, fi into the fire, right? All these things. So if we think this way, then it's not like, oh, we can, we'll just take junk food and garbage, garbage experiences, and we'll chant Brahmarpanam, and then we'll make it spiritual, right? No, no, you take the best quality things, and then th that itself, the collection of the best quality things. They're being used for, for puja, for adoration. And, and uh, that itself is, that is puja, not just, as the old joke is, well, just hariyom it, you know, it's like <laughs> some greasy, horrible looking thing <laughs> comes out of a box, it's hariyom it, it's fine, you know. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so uh, the, so the, 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 the tray of puja samargri, these beautiful, the best quality, symbolic of everything, and the best you could find, Right, the best you can afford, right, in in polish uh, um, utensils, you know, everything you want to do with the best. That itself is puja. So those are those things. What are the things you're collecting? We're collecting the best things to offer to God, right? 
but those things, what are those things? And we, and we we've been doing we're doing all the things to purify. We sprinkle water, we scrub everything. We're pure. We you know these mudras. We've talked about all these la 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 levels and layers of purification. But of course, we can think, oh, we're purifying, removing bugs and 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 dirty things and dust by washing. We're uh, uh, removing vibrational impurity by sprinkling with holy water and by chanting a mantra we can do like that but really the the highest impurity is in the mind what is it the mind holy mother has said that purity is in the mind impurity is in the mind Thakur also said so we don't see it purely right so part of this whole ritual things we're doing is to see it properly because actually every flower is the is is a puja flower Right, but when we go out to look, we look for the best. We, just, we look for the most pretty flower, and we pick it in a certain way, not to hurt the plant too much. And like, you know, for certain, and we collect and we wash it nice. We put it on the tray, and we show them all. Look at them all. Look at the flowers, and, and then we dip it in sandalwood paste, and we offer it with mantra. Right. So all the all these different things that we've done to purify, the, to collect, pick, choose, wash, uh, place, worship, dip, and offer the flower. Right. All those things are what's being purified. In one sense, the flower is just a flower, or or, or the flower is already a flower, <laughs> right? It's a, a, not maybe the flower does nothing happens to the flower, or maybe the flower is always perfect and perfect as it is. Doesn't need any any extra sprinkling and wiggling of fingers, you know, to make it pure, right? But all these acts change the way we think about it. Now, now they're not just flowers, you know. It's like. Uh, like you know, uh, you know, you walking in here, you probably walk by so many flowers. Maybe you noticed them, maybe you didn't, right? But the flowers that are offering the wildflowers and trying to like, oh, look at those, how beautiful, right? You know, the, our our consciousness changes about them. So we we're, what we're purifying is our consciousness, and we're and and the impurity is our our material conditioning, our material projection, our material consciousness. We see them spiritually. Either there's different ways to say to see something spiritually. One is to see it. As not to, not to see it as a separate thing, only seeing seeing it as a manifestation of God, as God itself, as consciousness, as full of consciousness, a manifestation of consciousness, or related to consciousness. That's another thing. You can say, oh, it's connected to God. Maybe it's God itself. That's that's uh, one perspective, right? Or at least it's God's. Another way to think it. These things aren't mine. You do walk around thinking all this. Everything I see is for my my own enjoyment. Right, but these things we see spiritually means oh, this is for Krishna, this is for Ma, this is for Takwa, right? That itself changes it, or this. So it's for God, or it's from God, or it belongs to God. Uh, these different ways, right? There's a scene in in the Gospel of Holy Mother, where somebody I mentioned this during when Swami, when we talked Swami Vivekananda's Bhakti Yoga section on the purity of food, where um somebody worked at a hospital and hospitals in the in the are not considered ritually pure places. They're very important holy places where great work is done, right? And a very intense meeting of worlds, they're, they're great sandhya places, powerful spiritual places. But ritually, they have a problem is that they deal with all the things that the ritual world considers unclean. Body fluids, blood, death, birth, all these things that are in a ritual, in ritually pure culture, cultures that have ritual purity, these are all things that are like, and therefore whatever, there may be important work, but generally people, uh, after coming back, they like uh, um, yogis, especially Brahmin, Brahmin yogis of 150 years ago, wouldn't eat at a hospital, right? They after coming home, they'd bathe and change their clothes, and then prepare pure food, and then eat that food because the idea that pure from purity of food comes purity of mind. That Krishna, that that, that Swamiji uh, uh, commented on, right? But he told Ma, he says, not only I mean I I I, can't, I, I don't have a chance to go home, bathe, and cook food. I have to work at the hospital, so I, 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 ha I need to. And not only do I need to, I do. I take food there. Right? Will it hurt my devotion? Right? It's, it's, and goes, we would never ask this question. We don't think these things that... We don't think we're not that conscious of these things. But he, was at, he at that time, was very conscious of these things. Right? And so he said, no, no, just think, when you eat, just remember, remember the Master, remember Sri Ramakrishna, and feel that he has given you this food. It will not harm you in the spiritual life. It's pure, right? That simple act. Because what's what is, is it's like? Not like oh, see it as Brahman, Brahmada Panam Brahma. It doesn't like that. Think oh, it comes. It's he's given it to you. If he's brought you, this is the food he brought you. He's given you. So that's if he's given it to you, it's pure. It's connected to God. So either God or connected to God or for God. All these different or prashad of God, 
all these different ways of seeing. You're, it's it's a scene. It's it's seeing it spiritually rather than materially. That's one of the great purifications. So if something is spiritual and we try to see it spiritual spiritually, then the thing itself can be worshipped, right? Because like like this Ma here, the statue of Ma, the image of Ma here, the Mur Tri Murti, we better to call it, the Archana Vigraha, the worshipable deity. We use we're careful. People say, oh, the image or the statue or the idol. Or the graven, the graven image of God that we worship here. <laughs> let's, just, let's just go straight for it. The graven image, the forbidden graven image. What, uh, uh, or an Im what, what, in one sense, we could materially, if I, not to see, if I were to see her materially, she's made of, I don't even know what she's, it's not granite, she's made of, um, yeah, granite, she's made of granite. Right? We never think like this now. Right? Nobody sees her as, you know, when people come in, oh, it's a beautiful temple. What's, the, what's that statue made out of? <laughs> Nobody thinks like that, you know. But I mean, you can, like, but but now we don't see it this way at all, right? Right. So now the thing that's that's a rock, a car, chiseled by human hands, graven by human hands, that's like against several dictates of several world religions, right? Uh, 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 what 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 is it? now? People come and they worship. They and, and it's completely, it's archana vigraha, the vigraha, the form that's worshipable. It's a worshipped form. Right. And of course, one thing everything could be theoretical arch and vigraha, we'd be careful. Right. But this form especially is is a consecrated form. It's worshipable. Right. So similarly, the things that we're using to worship, they're also can be consecrated. And therefore when they're consecrated by the proper attitude, proper attitude, maybe ritually created the attitude or by realization, uh, they themselves are also worshipable. And so this Gandhardi Archana means the worship of the sandalwood paste. And the other things, adi, beginning with sandalwood paste or etc. Sandalwood paste, etc. What are the what are these other things? It's the sandalwood paste. It's the incense. It's the light. It's the flowers. It's the bell. It's the conch. It's the conch stand. It's I mean it could be you can you can you can you can keep. It's everything, right? But like samargam puja samagri means a collection, a symbolic collection of everything. So we have a few symbolic things. And the sandalwood paste is the most symbolic because everything gets touched with sandalwood paste. Right? So that if you worship, if the sandalwood place is worshipped or is pure or, 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 or uh, um, understood, then everything, it includes everything because everything's touched with it. That's why it's mentioned. So in a simple puja, only the sandalwood paste is worshipped. But with the mantra, we worship everything starting with the sandalwood paste. Right? Etaganda pushpe, etagan. Ete bio gandadi bio. So where is it sprinkle? Ete bio gandadi bio namaha. Bio means more than one. That's the 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 the, the um the plural ending, right? So it's so it's not just it's the sandalwood paste and stuff, right? Etc. Adi. Ete bio all these, right? Ete means this. Ete bio means these. You would say, right? Gandadi bio all these sandalwood paste and the rest namaha. I bow or worship, and you simply sprinkle water. Right. So that then 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 they've been the, the sprinkling in a certain sense is a type of purification. We, we've done with sprinkling. We've done almost trayapat and omkring pat swaha. All these different mantras by sprinkling. So then a flower dipped in sandalwood. This is interesting. You take a flower and you dip it in sandalwood paste. And then this, you say, with this fragrant flower dipped in sandalwood paste, I worship the sandalwood paste and the other things. Ete ganda pushpe, with this fragrant flower. Om ete bio gandari biorama. I worship all these things, beginning with the sandalwood paste, etc. Right? So you worship with sandalwood paste, the sandalwood paste. Right? And this is a, what we're doing. We're worshiping small things with, with small things. But Tantra has, this form of Tantra is, has an uh, Advaitic background. So it's not just we're worshipping God with God's things. We're worshipping God with God. Right? These things are her, her, her own manifestation. They're her own being. Seeing them as such, we're off. Uh, so they're worshipped with themselves. Right? And the example is we, we take, when you sit in the, in the Ganga, you take water in your hand, you pour water to, to the Ganga. You worship the Ganga with Ganga water. Right? Uh, you worship uh, the sun with a with a candle, <laughs> with flame. The, you know, it's like it's worship it with itself. Right? So we, with the sandalwood paste, we worship the sandalwood paste, etc. Etaganda pushpe te bio gandari bio Then again, etaganda pushpe 
Om Eta Eta Adi Pataye Devaya Vishnave Namaha. Now, not only worshiping the sandalwood paste, what are we worshiping the sandalwood paste as? Right? It says uh, uh, Adi Pataye Devaya Vishnave Namaha. We worship as Vishnu, the Supreme Lord, the Universal Consciousness. Right? Vishnu, Adi Pata, Adi. Adipat, the original God, the original, I mean, the, the original Godhead himself, itself, herself, right, Vishnu. So it's like, not only worship this flower with the sandalwood paste, with, with a flower dipped in sandalwood paste, we worship this flower dipped in sandalwood paste, we worship the sandalwood paste as God, as the original form of God himself, herself, itself, right? So it's, it, it, you're getting very specific. This is God itself, right? Hitagandha right. Pushpe. Eta samprane bio pujaniya deve bio namaha. Sampradane bio pujaniya deve bio namaha. We were, and then with this, so with the sandalwood paste, we worship the sandalwood paste. With the sandalwood paste, we worship the sandalwood paste as God Himself. We worship, with the sandalwood paste, we worship the sandalwood paste uh, uh, as all the deities that accept puja. So now we're going to, who, who are the deities we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna worship? Worship Guru, Ganesha, Surya, Narayan, Shiva, Durga, right? Ramakrishna, Holy Mother, Vivekananda, Annapurna, you know, Pratangita, you know, you can start going through the Lakshmi, Saraswati, Krishna, Jagannath, this goes to the list, right? All those deities that accept our worship, right? We're worshiping them with the thing that they're so it's not on so it's the sandwood paste and all the puja things, everything being used in puja is worshipped. It's worshipped as the Supreme God. And it's worship as all the gods that we're going to be worshiping, right? So it's a very deep, profound thing, right? It's it's, it's this dual and non-dual. It's one, and uh, the one and many. Pujan Om Sapradani Bio Pujan Devi Bio Namaha. So that's a simple. In our in in I can't say the small book doesn't have it. The our Nitya Puja has it. On bigger pujas like Durga Puja and Shamakali Puja and Amavasha, we extend. This puja further, uh, actually even here it's extended. Some of them went further there. So then we worship not just the sandalwood paste, the sandalwood paste, and and the rest. Some of the rest are also important, right? Uh, um, so the next one is Etaganda Pushpe, Om Dupaya Namaha. Dupa means incense, right? So we worship also with it with this with this fragrant flower. We worship the incense. Of course, that incense we're using to worship the deity, but the the worship the deity. The incense is also the deity. It's also Lord Vishnu. It's also all the deities being worshipped, right? Right. Uh, it's one as the Gita says. Brahman, Brahman is the offering. Brahman is the fire. Brahman is the the one who offers, so, and, and then like this. Brahman is everything. All these different things. So incense. There's a mantra I don't have here. Probably one of, one of the books here. I don't know. I don't have it uh, bookmarked. That uh, that we use. In very even more elaborate pujas, where each offering has a prayer, right? Uh, and so the offering for offering incense, the prayer it says, uh, collecting saps, barks, saps, uh, saps, resins, and barks from sacred trees from from every forest, from whole, something like that, right? We've created this incense with this fragrant, you know. So, so even though we may just go and buy, you know, nag champa from. <laughs> Mothers or something. <laughs> That's our incense. Whatever we use, the best incense we can. You know, it's not too perfumey. Something that's natural, right? But the idea is, that what you're offering with the incense, you were offering the, the resins of, of of sacred trees from sacred forests, right? So the, once again, the best, the essence, the best you can get. That's the fragrance we're offering. And then we offer. Then we worship at the Gandapushpe Deepaya Namaha. We worship the lamp. Um, there's so many beautiful mantras for worshiping the lamp. There's mantras for lighting Deepam Jyoti Param Brahman. There's different mantras like that. We worship, there's a mantra that people use when they lamp the lamp in the evening as sunset comes. We've also lit a lamp without the proper mantra. There is a proper mantra for lighting the lamp. And it says Deepam Jyoti Param Brahman. This lamp, this 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 divine this the shining light Deepam Jyoti. This light lamp. Right, that's the same word twice. You know, we have there's like ninety words for light. It's hard to translate them here in a list. Uh, um, uh, th what is it? Para Brahman, the supreme Brahman. So it's like it's like this little. It's when is a lamp not a lamp? When is the supreme Brahman? 
you know, you know, that's, that's the thing. This lamp is the Supreme Brahman, right? You can also do uh, whole pujas just to a lamp. People have a beautiful um, Lakshmi deep. And sometimes lamps, very often, you go if you go to the Indian store, we have some, that, where the lamps themselves have deities on them. Often Lakshmi, right? Or we have one with the Naga. Or we have, we have a beautiful one with Durga, Lakshmi, Saraswati, Karti, in the full Durga puja thing, or Ganesha. Because the, the lamp is the deity. You do the puja, you can do the whole puja, whole puja just to a lamp. Right? It's, a, it's a perfect symbol of, not sim it's a symbol of God, light, heat, li uh, awareness, uh, warmth, safety, all the things that light represent. But it literally is God, not just a symbol of God. Right? So the whole puja can be done to the lamp. And that lamp we then use to worship. And in the evening, the, the traditional culture, when you light a lamp, then you take the lamp, that lamp that you light, you take it into every corner of the house. You take it room to room. Right? Or sometimes you do RT, you do all the different pictures. You know, there's a simple whatever some ceremony is, is that to bring light into the house. Bring light into the into the in, into the house, into the home means into your body, into your mind, into like this. And so this worship and lamp. You, now I've, it's unfortunate I don't see it happening, but maybe 10, 15 years ago at our ashram, right? An evening would come around this time. We'd be talking outside, and one of the boys would get go on to turn on the the light. There's one light. <laughs> The light. Now lights are too so common. We don't think we take any things. We have, we have ninety three lights in Kali Mandir now. I think in our new lighting system, <laughs> LED new lights. You know, so it's hard to hard to think of them separately as as as, as non different than representing uh, God, right? But there, when they you know, it became a little dark, we'd be talking. Guruji would be talking, and then it'd be dark. So one of the boys would come talk. As soon as they turned on, everybody would stop, and they they'd bow to, to the light bulb that just was turned on, and then they keep going. I go, unfortunately, I haven't seen that a new batch of kids or something doesn't do it, or we just another nail in the coffin of Kali Yuga. We lose consciousness of <laughs> light. When, when light is no longer a symbol of God, we've lost a lot. You know, that's one of the big. That's one of the big ones, right? <laughs> light. You know. So, um, but so yeah. So, but even that, you turn on the light. We, are we conscious? I mean, what does? Of course, we have big ones like sun, moon, stars. But also fire, but even electric lights. Everything is 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 light is light. You know, uh, le electricity is a type of fire. You know. <clears throat> so it's going to push om deep dupaya namaha. It's going to push be dupaya namaha. With this fragrant flower, we worship the incense. With this fragrant flower, we worship the lamp. It's going to push be. Then we worship the bell. We have this bell that we use for everything. Uh, we ring the bell during so many offerings. We'll go into that, uh, and it's always on a plate. Should always uh, a puja bell should never be directly on the floor or table. It should be on a plate. If you don't have a plate, I remember sometimes you'll they'll take like a like a uh, even like a, uh, a leaf or something. You put it in that becomes an awesome something for an awesome a cloth or a leaf or a kusha grass something to put it on right because this is why because this is now this is a deity, so it needs an awesome. So and 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 the the the, um, the bell is usually almost most puja bells have deities on them. Often, this one has Hanuman. Sometimes they'll have Garuda, the eagle mount of Vishnu. Right? We have some that have um, uh, um, Nandi, Shiva's uh, 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 bull. Sometimes they'll have a, a, a serpent, right? Uh, or um, uh, a tree shawl. Deborah has this great, huge, almost this big, really. Super awesome, very heavy. We used to use the term big puja. Uh, Pranav would do RT with that. I mean, even it takes two hands to carry it. I don't know how he did it. It takes two hands to carry it in. But it was very, very dramatic and cool. Right? Because then you see, there's no, we don't have to guess that they're, they're, they're deity. You can see the deity. Right? But what is this deity? The deity is here, Hanuman is like this. Garuda is like this. Uh, uh, Nandi is like this. Right? These are deities that are meant to serve. These are servant deities, right? They're vahanas or sevakas, like this, right? Right. So uh, the bell is. So the bell is. So that that gives a that gives a clue. What's the bell for? It's to serve the deity, and we can give, and we have, and it's like, oh, the reason we ring bell. I I tell you, disappoint people and offend people online, right? But one of my least favorite things in the world, right, is my personal spiritual uh, Facebook pet peeves. The people who post things. Oh, the real reason Hindus worship bells. Or the, the the real top ten the real reason we touch people's feet or real reasons we light a lamp they usually give a list of really stupid and not stupid they're all true right but they're so trite 
right? And and it's like, oh, you know, they think they, they think they're making Hinduism look good, but they're not making Hinduism look good. You know, it makes it. There's much much better reasons than the ones given, right? Uh, 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 uh. So there, so we can give such reasons, like well, like the bell. One of the things the bell, it um, uh, it concentrates the mind. That's true. Right, you ring a bell; it just may, removes distractions and concentrates the mind. It does, it's true. It's one of the reasons you ring a bell. You you immediately focus the mind, remove distraction, remove any in us any outside sounds. That's true, right? It's believed one of the reasons we have a bell at, at, at the door of a temple, right, is that it removes it, the sound of it destroys negative vibrations. So if you have any spirits or ghosts or other energies coming with you, you ring the bell; they get shattered, right? They go, and I think that's also true. Right, if you go inside of a Catholic church, there's a little, a little, um, um, a little niche with holy water, right? There's many, and you, you, you do the sign, you, you take that water and you purify yourself before entering, right? Very symbolic. I remember when I was ten, and it was explained to me, where he says, "Oh no, the devil may fall on you, may be falling you in. If you do this, he can't." If you do this, like, it's like great. <laughs> I know that I'm carrying the devil in, right? Right, but maybe I'm carrying the devil in. Maybe there's some some spiritual energy, or energy you know, and that removes it. I mean, at right at the gateway, there's something, some purifying thing right at the gateway, right? Uh, so the bell is something. Please come, Jaima. <clears throat> the bell is something. It also so, but but so that's that's true. It is it purifies the mind. I mean, it it removes distractions. It helps concentration and removes any uh, spiritual vibrational entity or energy right but remember all these deities are also like this right they're servants so the real reason behind it is 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 the deity is that of uh seva right you can close a little cold i'm hot and cold both thank you yeah thank you um right so so simple thing is the fact that hanuman does everything only to serve ram right and guru does does everything only to serve Vishnu, right? The bell is only to serve. So it's actually the reason we do it is to please the deity. And it's two things. One thing, another reason why we have the, the dwell at the door hanging um, um, is that it's like knocking, right? When you enter, right, there's, there, we believe that somebody lives at this house. It's not our house. It's not just, an, this is not an empty room. And when you enter a room where somebody is important, uh, is there, you let your, you announce yourself. Right, so that simple act of ringing a bell, or if you can't, if you don't ring a bell, this is something. If you don't ring a bell when you enter a temple, you can literally knock. As soon as you walk in, people just come in and they walk in, right, just to make some sound, right. This is we recently saw a video of Mahadevananda, one of the wonderful history historical sadhus of Kali Mandir uh, connection, and uh, he was a, like a Naga Baba uh, sadhu we knew. And uh, we were, we have a video of him. We went. He went. We, he took us to the beach to show us a place, a good place to meditate. That he meditated when he was a young, and he carries. A, he has a stick. As soon as he as soon as he got anywhere, he he got. We got to the to the. It was at um, Moss Point. He takes his danda and he does two whacks to the um the, the rail, ding ding, right. And then we went back down. We got to the bottom. He gave another two whacks because he's letting. This is a sacred grove, right? There's things. There's people there. There's spirits there. There's deities there. You never go without making noise. I first saw this. This is, this is sadhu culture. We don't. We do it in temple culture by ringing the bell or giving a tap when you enter. But in sadhu culture, I've seen in Amrakantak, we went to one wonderful ashram, and uh, 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 and and uh, when sadhu is no longer, he left his body, went to his kutir to see his his um his um his uh, um samadhi, and there was one of his disciples there. And everywhere he took me, he, he took me to different, like, oh this, he took me, oh, this is where Baba used to bury himself during Navarachi. This is where Baba used to, saw that sh form of Shiva that he pulled out of the river. This, you know, there's, every part of the ashram is full of these sacred things in, the, in a very wild, natural setting. But everywhere he went, he would, hey! and then he'd walk and walk. And then he'd get to the next section, he'd do these big, hey! you know, these like animal sounds and clapping. And he really, very, um, like, shamanistic sounds, right? But what he was doing, he was, these, this, he's not, we're not the only ones, we're not the most important people. We walk in, we walk into the temple, we're not the important people, the most important people here, right? You have to let them, you don't want to surprise them, right? So you make some noise. So even that's a type of service, right? So for these type of bells. For the bell we use in puja, right? There's a mantra, maybe I have it. Let me look if I have it. Sorry. I should have it. Karanyasa. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Sharga. Unfortunately, I don't have it here. Maybe not. Conch. Sorry, one second here. to do it by memory I think I have to do it by memory I lost my page unfortunately forgive me oh no by memory there's uh, I just want to chant the mantra is cooler <laughs> mantra is always cooler in memory but it says that within within the sound of the bell is all ragas and raginis right uh, that's the thing that means within the sound of a bell all ragas and raginis are there that means it's done as a musical offering to the deity when you ring the bell it's not for us to concentrate or to remove distractions, or even destroy uh, uh, negative vibrations. It's, it pleases Ma to hear the bell, right? You know, uh, uh, the very the very sound of the sound of the bell has, and you and you choose a puja bell. You know, we even, you know, when you go to choose a bell, you play, you you ring, you hear the different tones. You find one that's it has you hit. Even they call it bell metal. The the metal that bells are made out of are different. They have that when you make bells with these metal, they have different sounds. And you see, if you go, to, you used to go to a regular store and buy a bell. You need, you like, if you go to, you go, you you get a puja bell. They they sound differently, right? You you you're looking for the, for the proper sound. I do want to find this. Give me thirty seconds here. If I don't find it in a minute, then I shall talk amongst yourselves. Not really. Reading conch mud pasana. All these are really cool. And you have a two volume set. Acha, okay. Flowers. Mm, it's a shame. Too many things going on today. It's okay, I'll have to do it from memory. Anyways, um, so the so the the so the, the bell, all sounds are there. Also in the, there's a there's a, um. Uh, in the Dhyan Manasa Puja, we haven't gotten there. The part of the Kali Puja, a very very important puja, is Manasa Puja. Before you offer the items externally, you offer them by meditation. You visualize them. There's different ways. You can just visualize doing it, but then in the in the Tantra Shastra, it gives a very deep um, meditation of what these items actually represent, or what they are internally. Like for instance, the incense. This is prana. Incense is prana, right? The five prana, the five incense sticks, right? The tej uh, is the very essence of luminosity of fire. Fire element is fire. And then when it comes for the bell, this is Anahata Dwani. We talked about that like, let me, two weeks, last week or two weeks, last week, I think. It means the unstruck sound. This is Om. So the sound actually within, by saying that all ragas and raganis are in it, all sounds are there, right? All mantras are there, right? This means it's, the sound is Om. So the external thing will ring a bell internally. The, the real meaning is that the, the one sound behind everything, the sound from which manifests everything, right? Etaganda pushpe um 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 etaganda pushpe jaya dwani mantra mantaha mattaha swaha um gantaya namaha. So here it is actually so gantaya we worship the this one actually has it's not the mantra I was looking for it's this has it jaya dwani mantra mattaha we worship this fragrant flower we worship the bell which contains within it all mantras so not only all all ragas ranganis all mantras are there so ringing the bell is all mantras. It also does, there's a, there's, I'll tell you a secret from one of the, our puja gurus, uh, uh, wonderful sannyasini, revered um, uh, Pragrajika uh, Bhakti Prana, an elderly member of Bhakti Prana, old, she used to do puja arusha sometimes, very old. But she was, a, she was a puja guru for most people in California. Anybody who knew puja probably learned it from her in the original. Sami Chaitan had to learn mudras from her and things like this, right? 
And uh, 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 but she gave a secret. I'll give you all the secret. If you, know, if you could become pujaris or not, but she said, "When in doubt, ring the bell." And I was there, stupid. So sometimes, sometimes you're like, you know, you're losing the crowd. You know where you are in the book line. It's like, it's like well, just, yep. you know, it's like everybody think, "Oh, very powerful puja," because the bell, the bell is already auspicious. People hear the bell. Oh, very, very good. Puja. Even though you may not, you may be doing it because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> but ringing the bell has. Um, you see, even in church, we have church bells. Yeah, the bell is something means to be a very sacred thing, you know, the sound of a bell. We worship the bell. Then often we take some sandalwood paste and actually put sandalwood paste on the head of the deity, or to, like if it, there's a like for ours we have a Hanuman, you can put it on the feet of Hanuman, right? And then offer flower. Sometimes we lift up the flower, we lift up the the bell. So left hand we put a flower, and then before putting it down, you give a little ring. When you worship the bell, you, you have to let the bell make a sound. In the pushpe can die on you when you put it down. And sometimes and during a more elaborate puja, you can do actually do with different types of sandwich paste, the four corners of the bell. It, it can be more elaborate. I'm not gonna go so much. Then etaganda pushpe om shankaya namaha. Shanka means conch. So the conch is also is also worship. Now conch is a very special, actually most in a world of ritual impurity, things that come from the body are considered unclean. Right when they're separated from the body, like for instance, your hair is all beautiful and clean and beautiful. You know, it makes you look. Mine looks very good right now. Uh, uh, but if it's but if it's once it's separated from the body, it, it changes. Right, you know, you can see all oh, you you can stroke your, your your somebody's hair. Oh, look how beautiful your hair is. But if it's like but when it's on the bathroom floor, you're like it's gross. You should have cleaned that up. Right, you know, it becomes different. Right, or Sami Sami Chirananda says, you know, somebody we spend hundreds of dollars on very expensive hair oils for our hair, for our wife's hair, and like that. But if one of those hairs in our food, we vomit, right? It's, so once it's separated, you know, like I, you know, we, uh, you go to a, um, a, a salon to get your nails done, right? And it's like, oh, you look at how beautiful they're doing your nails. But what they cut off, you're like, you know, if, if they click it and it falls on you, you freak out. <laughs> what, is, what is it? So, so, so the things that come from the, the, the things that come from the body, like hair, Right or a shell is considered also comes from the body. It's like nails. It's it's something that's produced from the body. Once it's separated from the body, it becomes unclean. Right, considered ritually un ritually unclean. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to. We already talked about the different hygiene and purity and the different thing, but ritually unclean. It's not considered clean, and therefore these things would not be used in puja. Right. So like, but we do have like like hair is considered unclean once it's separated from the body, but of course our ma has hair. But her hair is made from synthetic hair, right? If in ancient, before there was synthetic hair, it could be used yak tail. Yak tail has a unique situation where it's not considered unclean, ritually unclean. It stays pure. And there's reasons for it, symbolic and actual. Um, for feathers, feathers also, it's, it's a byproduct of an animal, right? So feathers are not, of course, feathers are sacred. I mean, we, every tradition has its own group of feathers. You know, it's like you wear an eagle feather in the wrong place, you, you can be attacked. It's a, you, you don't have the right to that. It's, it, it requires qualification. These have deep meaning. But so feathers, you know, but in, in Hindu puja, the only feather that's usable is um, peacock feather. So you see Krishna wears a peacock feather. Right? And there's reasons for it, symbolic and actual and reasons. So we also, when we use a fan, we, and also people, many times I'll make a group of peacock feathers and make in the you know, Shakti blessings. Muktananda used to use it for Shakti pot of peacock feathers. Swami Muktananda. Uh, many temples you go, they, they have a, a group of peacock feathers. They just they touch the deity's feet and give you a whack as a way of giving blessings. You know, uh, and we use it also in puja. So, uh, uh, so in shells, most shells are considered unclean, also except for conch shells. Conch is considered always pure, and. Uh, uh, I mean, it should be clean properly, and like this has to be has to be. It may not always be clean, but it's considered ritually pure. And so, anything like so, when you have shalograms, they make eyes out of conch shells, not out of other shells, right? And uh, um, and also, we use the bracelets, these auspicious bracelets that married women would use. Ma herself wears them, made of conch shells. Right? There's reason for that, and we use it. We blow conches, right? And we we use, we have one on the shrine that we use for worship. This is the one that's being worshipped. If this was not there, some conch is worshipped, right? And uh, uh, and there's reasons for why the conch 
there's 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 a story reasons. It says that when um there was um I'm forgetting I'm hearing conch. <laughs> Perfect conch shells being blown. <laughs> so, so one is that Vishnu. One time there was a battle. I'm, I, I'm forgetting. I, I may come to me. There was a battle. Vishnu was fighting some de demon, and at one point he reaches into the ocean and picks up a conch, and he uses it. Right, either he blows on it or he smashes. I forget the details, but he, he, he Vishnu grabbed the conch. And you see, one of the Vishnu is one of his four things. He holds a conch. That's the conch that he that he holds. Right. And so that just by being touched by Vishnu, it said that conch became pure, right? That's one thing. And you can see, of course, with our conch touched by Vishnu, you know, but the thing is it's connected to Vishnu, right? If you want you see something connected, it's from, for, or is Vishnu, right? The different ways we see these things, it becomes pure, right? So conch has become pure that way. Also, by blowing the conch, once again, it's like the bell contains all mantras, the sound of Om. The conch is also the symbol of the sound of all mantras, the sound of Om, the and and when um uh what is it uh in the Maha, in the Bhagavad Gita in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita the 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 army the 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 armies are facing each other what do they do if they grab the, all the great heroes they all have their conscious and they all they all their conscious and name different things these are like these are identified with them right they they got they receive them from different people through certain battles and certain, you know. And um, they all blow, and or and and you hear the conch, you know, everybody gets, yeah, you know, it's it's they're, 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 it's, it's victory, it declares victory, and, and, and it's courageous, and awakens something in you, right? It's a sound om, it's a roar. Another way you could almost think of it, you know. Uh, and then it says that Krishna grabbed his conch, right? Remember the name of it? Panchanjanya. Right, that's his name of his conch, right? So that's Vishnu's conch. It's also, and there's a story. I think that's the demon, the name of the demon that he defeated, I believe. I'm, I'm not fresh in my mind right now. But I think that's how that Vishnu uh, was fighting a demon and so Panchanja is a victory over that demon, something like that. Uh, but that's his sound, right? But it's also, it's his conch. Each one had their own conch, and therefore each one had their own sound. Vishnu sound, that's God. In the story of the Mahabharata and the Bhagavad Gita, God, in case you're wondering, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, Krishna is God, right? So in that story, whenever he, whenever he's speaking, he says Bhagavan Uvacha. It's God's song, God's words, God's advice. And so that's also God's sound, right? The sound of a conch is transcendental sound. It represents transcendental sound. It represents Om. It represents all. And from Om comes the Gayatri. Today is Gayatri Jayanti. You have the Gayatri Jayanti. The day it said that uh, the Gayatri Mantra was first heard. Uh, and, so, and, so, and from the Gayatri comes the Vedas. That means all Vedic sound with the Vedas. Vedas is all spiritual revelation, all scriptures, all oral tradition, all sacred mantras, all sacred music. Right? It's, so within the sound, God's sound is, you know, God said, let there be light, and there was light. From that sound, everything comes into existence, right? So the conch has something special, right? So the conch is also worship. Let's see if I can. See how I can. <laughs> We're a little late. Please forgive me. <clears throat> uh, um, and the month. So another thing about the con is the symbol of the conch. If you see the symbol, we've used many of the symbols of that. It, it's the feminine symbol of the yoni, and and it, within the conch is all these twists, right? Like so, it's also the 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 uh, birth canal, the whole system, the whole. Uh, even our our stomach is considered like a conch. Is all these different. You know, it's it's not just one thing, right? It's lots of it's it's a it's a it's a it's a spiral within, right? So that's it's the Devi herself. So we worship actually just like we worship the Kosh Kushi, right? We also do the same mantra. We offer into the into the mouth of the conch the same thing. Later, the deity will be installed in the conch. It was eat with all the instant same mantras we do to install the deity. We do it every day to the conch. We fill it with water and we invoke the deity. And with that water, what do we do? We bathe the deity. It's like with the sandalwood paste, we bathe sand, we worship sandalwood paste. With the water in the conch, we worship. Uh, we, we we installed Kali in the conch, or Vishnu in the conch, and we worship Kali or Vishnu in the deity by Abhishekam. The same thing is going to be waved, the water it's waved in the in the, in the conch. The same thing. Etaganda pushpe om hum 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 namaha maha shankaya swaha hum hum. These are these are once again transcendental sound, uh, uh, powerful mantras. We bow to these mantras. Maha shanka, the great conch, right. Uh, there's also another story which I won't tell now because the timing is not there, uh, um, uh, of how he the shank, the word shank also has a, a, a predestined story in Skanda Purana. It's there, 
Navy Bhagavad Gita is also there. It's related to Tulsi and other things like this. Maybe we'll mention it. How the Shank gets the name Shank also. There's a there's a demon by that name also. Uh, and then Om Panchanjaya Namaha. Uh, you can do Om Shankaya Namaha. We wish it or Panchanjaya. We wish it specifically Vishnu's conch, right? So this is Vishnu's conch, right? So I think the next, oh, do I have time to surargya? You gave me time. Uh, is at, at 6.30. I'm going to take 10 minutes <laughs> to do something. This, uh, because this way, next week, we can start the, the Devata Puja, the Guru Ganesha, it, rather than this. It's OK. Uh, at least I had some notes. So surargya, the next section is, and it's done before every puja, is the offering of water, argya, or a respectful offering to surya, the sun. And this isn't all right. Many people maybe have done it. Many people do it daily, right? Millions of people, do it. tens of millions of people do it daily. We try to do it daily also. It is usually early, first thing in the morning, right? It's really the auspicious time was in the, was in the first hour of sunrise, right? Uh, from, sun, from sunrise, from sunrise within the first hour. But it means when the, because it says that the, the sun should be red, the light is red, right? Aruna, you know, the, the color of the sun at that, of course, during the rest of the day, the, the sun's not always red. So there's a certain spectrum of light that's being invoked during the early hours, and uh, but whenever it's done, it should be done. Whatever your it the, the 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 sun rises on our planet and within at sunrise, right? The sun rises in our life when we wake up, we open our eyes and see light. So it, it should be done first thing in the morning, if not first thing in the day, first thing in our morning, if not first thing in the day, right? But there's a benefit to the actual time, and we take what do we do? We take um. Uh, a copper vessel usually, or in the hand, you take, you put some water, sometimes some leaves and flowers and things like that, usually red flowers, and you face the sun. We do it in the morning facing the sun, barefooted, clean cloth, and you chant uh, some mantras, invoking the sun with the Gayatri mantra, you pour water onto the earth or into the, like this. Now this is done daily by millions of Hindus, uh -uh, but everything that's supposed to be done daily is done throughout the day, or throughout the year even, is done within an hour during puja, so it's still included. Even if you've done it in the in the beginning part of your day, it's also done the beginning part of the puja, it's because the puja is also your day, right? That's the sun, so the sun has to be worshipped. And so we do we take the kosh kushi or some item like this, the, the the small spoon. We put flour, we put water, and holding mantra. I'll chant the mantra, and we chant the vini yoga mantra. We, we already mentioned vini yoga mantra, the application mantra. Om gayati mantra sya vishamitta rishihi. Gayatri Chandaha, Savitta Devata, Argya Pradana Vinayogaha. For this mantra, of uh, the mantra is Gayatri Mantra. Vishwamitra is the, uh, the, the uh, sage who first heard Gayatri, is a Rishi. Savita, the sun is the deity. Uh, uh, Gayatri Chandaha, Gayatri is the meter, 24 uh, syllables per verse. Argya Pradana Vinayogaha, and the purpose is to offer Argya. And then then it, some people will chant the Gayatri Mantra, others will just chant other mantras. But really the Gayatri Mantra should be chanted. We won't go into full detail of the Gayatri, but on the Tatsavitur Varin. Today's Gayatri, today's Gayatri uh, Giant, we have to Om Bur Vasvaha Tatsavitur Varinyam Bargo Devasvedi Mahi Yo Yo Naprachurya Ata. And then, and then, then there's a, a, a mantra, a famous hymn Om Namo Vishute Brahman Bashute Vishnu Tejase Jagat Savitre Sitche Savitre. So the Gayatri Mantra is, I won't, this is a full class and there's many books and uh, can be written in Gayatri Mantra, but uh, there's the Gayatri Mantra is, in, from the Gayatri comes the Vedas, right? So we imagine there's a lot in it. There's everything in the Gayatri. It can be interpreted in every possible way. But the simple word meaning is that um, um, uh, uh, we, we worship that um, that uh, divine Savita, the sun, right? Shining Bargo Devasyadi, who shines with divinity, right? May, may that divine sun illuminate my consciousness, give me illumination. The light of, so, so it's actually worshiping the sun, may the, the sun that shines divinely illuminate me, right? Now, the sun's. Uh, a, a, a glorious deity, right? Shankaracharya has a hymn one place. He says, where are the gods and goddesses? Right? Nobody's seen them. We have all kinds of fantastical beliefs about these gods and goddesses, right? He says, but the sun I see, 
and the earth I see. Right? So the sun is my father, the earth is, these are visible God. The other ones, I mean, he was in a mood, you know, that, that poem is by other, he also wrote songs to all the different <laughs> gods and goddesses, right? But I like this mood also. I had the one song that Raghavananda, the you met in the Himalayas. He was a full iconoclastic Vedantic Hindu, right? And he was very dis disdain for all these gods and goddesses of so-called Hindus, and that was his mood, you know. He was a great worshiper also, but that was his, his uh, you know, his external bob. And when he also quoted, that's where I learned this verse. He said, he said all these gods are going to be seen and they're just fictitious. It's this mix, made up stories of child brains. It was his mood. Like, the sun we see, the earth we see, the moon we see, these are visible gods. If Brahman can be seen, that's Brahman, you know. <laughs> very much. Um, so very beautiful. Uh, so the sun, so the sun is, for all purposes, that is, what is it? It's a symbol of, it's, it literally is our god. It's the one, the cause of life and earth and prana and veg, vegetation and the seasons and everything we're getting here is is being activated by the sun. But just like the sun shining on the earth creates life on earth, right? Purusha shining on Pakriti creates movement in Pakriti. So the sun is Purusha, is the self and God. Therefore, it's a perfect symbol of the self and God, right? Swami Chidananda, His Holiness Swami Chidananda Maharaj, he would always say, he always said, the, the, sun, the, the light of light beyond all darkness. That was it. Whenever he mentioned God, is the light of light beyond all darkness, right? And then he, and then we would say it shining externally as the sun, right? And internally as the self, right? So the, the the God can be seen externally as the sun symbolically, but actually we see the sun because of the self, right? If there's nobody to see, you don't see the sun. The, the, the Upanishads say, "You shining, everything shines," right? We the sun does not illuminate this world. We our consciousness illuminates this world. Our consciousness sees the sun shining on the world, right? So consciousness is the real sun. We're, 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 so we're tuning not just to the sun, but we're tuning to the internal sun. And so there's a reason why I offer, I have, I have four minutes now, the reason why I offer is water is offered to the sun. It's called tarpana, right? Argya or tarpana. And you, we do it to the planets of different deities. You offer tarpana. There's an ancient story, right, that describes it. Uh, uh, there was a demon called Mandehas. Mandehas. And he did, like all good demons, he went onto an island. The island is Aruna, Aruna, uh, Aruna Island. And he did tapasya to get a boon from Lord Brahma, right? Because he was a demon, and demons love darkness, not light, right? The great, you have to remember that. Like, so he did tremendous tapasya, and Brahma comes, and what do you want? And I don't remember, he probably asked for physical mortality, and it was not granted like they all do, but he asked for, he says, I want the power, right, to fight the sun, right? By my power, I shall bring dark, I mean, there's a movie, it was the, 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 the new superhero movie we watched, what's it called? Uh, what is it? Infinity War. Infinity War. It's like they're trying to like block, you know, it's like there's a like darkness must win, we, we must, you know, <laughs> there's always this battle between light and darkness, right? So we want dark, so, uh, um, 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 <clears throat> So he did. He got such a, a puja, but there's always a way out, right? So it says that 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 every every night at, at sunset, right? This demon, man, uh, what did I say? Mandehas, Mandehas. He he attacks. He attacks the sun, right? And it doesn't just attack. He, he attacks with six hundred and sixty million devatas, demons, with hordes of demons, right? And there's a thing. I'm saying this right at sunset. Right, because this is when Medehas, uh, Mandehas, and his six six hundred and sixty million demons attack. You kind of can you feel them? Can you hear them? Rumbly. It says that at the at the horizon, they're the like it's from uh, like a from a, from a like a Lord of the Rings type movie. There's armies coming, right? But every night and every morning, there's there's devotees and Brahmins and Pujaris and Sadhus and Bhaktas that are worshiping the sun. And, and sprinkling water. If it was those mantras charged with water, they're, they're, they get shattered and, and go back. They can't, they're, they're, they disappear. Right? This is one of the, at sunset, what do we do? We ring bells, we burn incense, we blow conches, chant mantras, people chant their Gayatri, they offer uh, water. These are the things we do at this time. This is a transition time, the dangerous time. We move these things. But this story is a very a simple story, but it has a very deep meaning. It's man dehas. Man means mind, deha means body. Right, so the, this demon is the body, is the darkness of the body and mind. Right, that that. So we want we we. It's our body. It's our body consciousness. You could say our material consciousness, 
our confusion, illusion, this is mandehas, right? And so the sun we're worshiping by offering water is mantra. We're just, we're, 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 uh, we want to illuminate the mind, prachodayat, right? We want to illuminate the mind from, the, from this darkness of ignorance, where light is darkness, the light of light beyond all darkness, right? False identification like this. So I'll just read this one. Namo Vishute Brahman Bashute Vishnu Teja Seja Vitre Sucha Savitre Karma Daini. We salute uh, uh, Vivashwat, the absolute, the luminous, the brilliance of Vishnu. He is the light of he is the light of God. The light, the, the, the shining light of God is Vish, is is the sun. He's the purifier of the worlds. Actually, uh, uh, Jagat Savitre Sucha Sucha. He's the one who brings purifier. You see anything dirty thing, you put it in the sun, it becomes clean. Right, that's the thing. That maybe I mean we know that there is ultraviolet and you know lights and you know that kill. But actually, you see that's one of the ways you purify. You put it in the, and we bring bring things out to the, even things within our relationships. When you bring it out into the light of the sun, it, it gets purified. Right, right. Uh, the great purifier. So obviously, the cause of, and karma daine, the one who causes action. This is purusha shaina pagriti causes action. Eshargya was his offering. We worship the sun. Om namo and then the seven mantra. Om Namo Narayanaya Aruna Mandala Madratmane Madhya Vartine O Lord Vishnu is Surya Narayan, Lord Vishnu who is Aruna Mandala who sits in the central circle of the sun. O Lord Vishnu sitting in the central circle of the sun, right? In he sits on a red hibiscus. That early morning hibiscus, early evening hibiscus of color, right? This is actually one of the reasons hibiscus can't be offered to most deities, only to Kali. Can't offer it to Lakshmi, can't offer it to not even Lakshmi or Saraswati or Durga, right? But you can't offer it to Surya because of this color. He is the color of hibiscus. He sits on a hibiscus, right? Uh, 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 we, uh, uh, um, uh, we worship not a seat in the center of the sun. Sri Surya Narayanam, Idam, Argya, Dattam, Namama. And so in elaborate puja, this is a simple thing. You're offering this Gayatri Mantra. A spoonful of water to the sun. The first thing before starting. This is actually before starting puja, right? Surya will be offered proper puja later. So the sun will be offered proper puja in a few in a few pages. But this opening thing, and then in elaborate puja, then also the mantras for the planets are also offered. Aditam tarpiyami, somam tarpiyami, garakam tarpiyami, buram tarpiyami, brahaspitam tarpiyami. I'm forgetting now. I lost my train of thought. Anyways, rahum tarpiyami. And then the 12 names of Vishnu, right? Namuram Tarpayam, Narayanam Tarpayam. You know, there's, there's different names of Vishnu that are there. Why? Because the sun itself that has, tw has 12 forms, they're connected to the 12 forms of Vishnu. So these 12 purifying names of Vishnu are also considered to be non different from the sun. And so the, uh, the planets are worshipped, the names of Vishnu are worshipped. They can be expanded even to the gods, the rishis, the sages, the ancestors, right? To uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva to Saraswati, uh, uh, Lakshmi, uh, Savitri. I mean, we can the, the tarpan can be expanded, but what's tarpan? Just uh, this offering continues offerings of water, like this. We there's a deep of water and fire and earth. There's a lot of stuff we, we didn't have time to go into that because now I'm, I'm three minutes late, past my my grace my ten minute grace period. <coughs> so anyways, we'll end there for now. And thank you for your kind attention as we act this perfect sunset here on this holy, on this holy Gayatri Jayanti Day near Jolly Akadasi, very special auspicious Akadasi Day called Bhishma Akadasi. said that, that uh, um, Lord uh, Bhishma is famous for being very hungry, right? He had a, a what he said, a, a wolf stomach, you know, that concave stomach, he was like that. And so when all the other Pandavas very strictly followed Akadasi, Bhishma said, I can't do it. And so there's a conversation when the Puranas where Krishna says, if you can do it, if you can follow, if you strictly follow this ikadasi, Bhishma Kadasi, therefore it's called Bhishma Kadasi, right? Then, uh, but you have to really strictly follow it. No water even, right? Nirjal without water. We did not follow this Nirjal ikadasi today. That you'll make up for any mistakes of the other ikadasi. So this is one, if you follow this one on this strictly, so some people are strictly following. And it happens during the hot season. So... <laughs> So if, 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 if you meet any devotees that are being grumpy, it's probably because of the near Jalakadasi. We pray that if you, your tolerance of their grumpiness, 
uh, 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 help purify their <laughs> destroy sins of so many so many benefits uh, following the Kadasi. Hari Om Tatsat. Jai Ma, Jai Ma, Jai Ma.